343 recently made some significant changes to the sandbox and I talked about them in a previous video, but those were all just numbers and speculation. But now we actually have the game right here. So I figured I'd jump in and show you guys what those nerfs and buffs actually look like. If you like these analytical videos, make sure to tap that like button. It's the best way to let me know you want to see some more content like this. If you're new to the channel and want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo, make sure to tap subscribe. So let's get right into those details. So let's start off with the weapon in my hand right now, the Disruptor. It got some significant changes with it. One is that they removed the damage over time effect with it. They reduced the chain effect by half. They increased the super combine damage from 60 to 70 and increased the rate of fire just a little bit from 4.28 rounds to five rounds per second. So let's check it out. So, I mean, you don't really notice it a whole lot when it comes to like the speed and fire. It's definitely noticeably a little bit faster, but nothing too crazy. As you can see right here, I left this prior one shot and they are not going to die as the damage over time has been removed. Let's just do a continuous shot right here. You can't understand what the time to kill is on this thing. It's a little bit better. It almost feels like now, obviously, with the rate of fire improved a little bit. We can check out the chain damage here. If we shoot this pedestal right here, it still, it still does the chain damage. And in a full clip, if you do chain him, you still can get the kill, which is very cool and a unique aspect about the Disruptor I really enjoy. So I'm glad that still is an effective tactic. Try again on the single player here if it reaches to them. It does reach them. See if it reaches to these players right over here. It does chain a little bit, but not as much as it was previously. That was noticeably different. Let's we'll see if this still chains. So that still chains as well. So it's still a pretty good distance when it comes to world units. It's pretty tough to measure exactly how much that actually is. But pretty much if there's someone near that other player, you can pretty much assume that they're going to be able to connect the sh shots together. This person is a little further back. You can see now that's basically this is two and a half world units from this weapon spawn location to about right there. Because you can see it has this AI Spartan standing right there that it does not chain at that moment. Previously, I think it would have changed. So I think that was actually a good nerf. As you can see now, the player moved in front of them that now you can see it actually chained. So I think that's a little bit more accurate of how it should be. Next, let's talk about the spike grenades. And basically they said that they went from eight to 16 flush shots within it. So that's a big damage increase right there. But they said that the travel distance went from five world units to 3.5 world units. So the blast rates is much smaller with that. The area effect damage went from 3.2 down to two world units. Units. They also reduced the area of effect damage amount from 300 to 160, but of course they also increased the number of flushettes, so that's kind of a bit of a balancing act right there. And like I said, the flushettes deviate less, so we can check it out right here. We can throw this spike grenade right there. You can kind of see how they really are a little bit more, because this is still a bit of randomness to it. They still hit that player right there. But I saw that we're actually nerfed quite a bit to where they don't really hit kill players if you throw it right underneath their feet. This is what I saw on Twitter. And you can see, yeah, it does not actually kill the player if you throw it right underneath their feet, like right there. No kill. But if you stick them with it, obviously, it's going to get the kill. They stated that they wanted to be a little bit more deliberate with their tosses, so we kind of throw it like right next to them like this to see how it actually kind of plays out. You can see that it looks like it kind of, at this distance, it probably take about three, yeah, three different spike grenades to get the kill. So you have to be much more specific on your tosses to really make them a little bit more effective uses. They said they wanted to be able to make people be a little more deliberate with their toss. I think it's probably gonna be a little bit less of a blast radius than say like the seeking grenades in a way. But maybe more of an effect of being like an area of denial kind of grenade rather than like something you actually get a kill with. Kind of like how the splinter grenades were within Halo 4 and Halo 5. Very similar grenade, the dynamo grenades, aka the shock sticks, the shock grenades also has some interesting changes, some nerfs and some buffs. Where they said they reduced the shock area of effect distance from 3.5 to 2 world units. Reduce the shock chain distance from five to two world units. Increase shock damage per burst from 18 to 21 as the range has been decreased. Remove the movement stun from the shock grenade. So if you are getting stunned with one, you'll still be moving at full speed, which I actually like that change. Lower the arming time from 0.65 to 0.5 seconds, so it should activate a little bit sooner. Reduce delay between shock damage pulses from 0.3 to 0.25 seconds. So it'll be dealing out damage more often and added one additional shock damage pulse at 2.5 seconds. As well, so like we said earlier, from uh, this spawn point to right about there is about two and a half world units right there. So if we kind of throw this dynamo grenade down right here, you see no chain right now. Even that player saying like right there, we'll try it again. Here we go. Now we're actually getting some chaining happening right here. I'll back up a little bit more and check out what the chain distance actually is going to be like. You can see that player really didn't take any damage with that shot grenade bouncing basically right to them. So 
The distance is much shorter. There we go. Now we're actually getting some chain effect happening right there. You can see it actually did take him down to one shot. So it's still a very effective grenade. Definitely a great area effect, area denial kind of thing. So it seems like right about here is where the distance is for the radius when you actually start getting chained. Now some significant changes were made to King of the Hill where the hill spawns in within five seconds of the match instead of 15 seconds to get people more urgency to jump on top of the hill. They also said they removed the wind up time when it comes to scoring. So once you walk in, you start scoring right away, which is true, but also not. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I saw this here online, but basically watch this. So you're going to the hill, right? You start scoring right away. You're on the hill, you start scoring. But when you hop off, there's a cooldown and it goes back to neutral as you would expect. But watch this though. I hop in, start scoring, hop off, hop back in. There's that wind up coming back in again once it's cooling down. There's still that wind up in the game match, which is kind of interesting. If you're going to back off the hill, it seems like you want to jump in and then let the cooldown happen and then come back in, which actually was, was addressed by Tashi online, stating that this is not intentional and we will be addressing this in a later update. The intent is that you get in and out of the hill and you're either scoring or not scoring instantly without wind up in either direction. Crucial changes were also made to King of Hill on locations where the, some of these hills spawn, specifically on Recharge and Streets. Right here on Recharge, this is the before spot where in that long hall area is where the hill would cap spawn in. And pretty much whoever started in that hill pretty much would keep it for the most part as there were a lot of spawn locations and things like that. But now they've actually moved that hill to outside on what you'd call the C plat location. This still makes it a rather difficult hill now, but I think it's a good change for the game here. Before 3 also changed the hill location for the center hill on streets, which is basically a death trap. Like the, if you're gonna jump on this hill, you need a shroud screen or a lot of bravery and luck because this was a absolute death trap of a hill because no matter where you stand, there was no cover. Well, they changed that now with this hill location where they've actually extended it to this little tires jump section right here, as well as a little bit into the ATM section as well. So then players are not just completely stuck out in the open, just taking shots from every possible direction. An excellent change. Now for all you custom game fans, a significant change happened where previously, if you wanted to go into the custom game browser, you have to go to under the community tab and search under there, which not exactly the most intuitive thing. Now they actually put it under the custom game option. You click on that and now you have the custom game browser or create a match. And so then hopefully this will promote more people to jump in and play the custom game browser as it's one of the highlights of Halo Infinite. And it was rather underplayed because it was just kind of hidden within some menus. Another significant change was actually with the theater mode within Halo Infinite. I definitely want to show you guys the improvements that they made with it. They didn't state this at all within the patch notes. They stated this in the pre-patch uh, blog update showcasing this. So I want to showcase this clip right here of me getting some kills. You can kind of just keep an eye on where my reticle is. It actually is significantly improved. You can see right here, my shots in this theater mode are actually where I was aiming. Now they're not perfect still. I was still rate the uh, classic bungee theater mode. Still better than this. I still would not rely on this theater mode for like a clip if you want to put like in a montage or something, but you can see now it's rather passable where you can actually believe that where I'm shooting in theater mode is actually where I was shooting in the game. So some massive improvements were made, which I am very happy about this because I love the theater mode. I love jumping in, grabbing screenshots and clips. And, you know, as a creator, this is an absolutely massive feature that's very needed within this franchise. And it's sad to see that in such a poor state, but I'm glad to see the improvements that were being made. And a 343 developer that's vocal on Twitter here, 343 Taxi, aka Brian, saying that theater latency compensation has been an ongoing work for our theater dev. More to come. So we will get some more fixes when it comes to the theater mode hopefully working properly. I still don't have high hopes, but I'm glad to see that's actually being worked on. 343 recently talked about their near term future when it comes to Halo Infinite, talking about season four and five, things like campaign DLC and cross core customization were addressed. And I wanted to showcase that in this video right here. So you guys can go check that one out. Thank you much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.